What's up everyone? Today we're going to be trying to figure out where our oil pressure went in this engine. And if you guys have been following the, the videos and what's going on, the uh, the big thing was, of course, while we're at Nix, we lost around 40 PSI at idle. And sure, when the oil gets a little bit hotter, your, your pressure is going to drop. But even with the, the push rods and the lifters not being the exact same length for what they're supposed to be, there shouldn't have been that much of an oil leak. And it took a little while and I, I kind of talked it out different potential issues before we dug into this you know and one thing that kind of struck me was when I was dismantling this engine and I was actually stamping the uh the the rod caps there was different markings than what there should have been like there was one two and then the numbers were all mixed up we had two fives so at some point I, I proposed potentially someone pulled apart the engine or maybe when someone was assembling the engine back you know when it was at the factory maybe it was a Friday engine but while we were assembling the engine down at Tony's, he confirmed that this thing definitely had been pulled apart at some point in its life. And back to when I was disassembling it, Tony said, hey, just check, see what, what size the bearings are. You know, and I, I talked to him about it and we came up with it being um, standard size. So I ordered standard bearings. <clears throat> My uh, What I proposed to Nick was, what if when the person was assembling this engine, they just put standard bearings in with the crankshaft and that's what's causing our issues. Perhaps we have the wrong size bearings on the crank because then you get too much oil flow once the oil hits temperature. And it was weird because the oil pressure would drop at the five minute mark and it would drop pretty quickly. So it was almost like once the oil hit a specific viscosity, it just went away. So the first thing I want to do today is we're going to try figuring out if these bearings are the right ones or not. So Nick said, you know, because when you assemble an engine, it's always good to use a plastic gauge to figure out, hey, is this the, you know, is this all jiving? It's not the perfect and it's not the most accurate um, measuring device, but it's a darn good one to at least get you to see if you're in the right ballpark. So if we pull this off and we kind of see, hey, we have way too much tolerances in the actual, you know, the main, and we're also going to pull one of the caps off. That's that's what Nick said. Pull one of the mains off, pull one of the caps off, and see what it happens when you torque it back down with specifically green. So we, we broke out the green, and we're going to find out what's going on in the bottom end of this engine. And we also have a brand new oil pump, so when we reassemble it, we'll go ahead, put the new oil pump in, because when we were running this, a lot of crap went through the block, and uh, one of the worries is, we have premature wear on that oil pump. So let's go ahead, check the bearings out. Now guys, using Nick's numbers, what we're looking for is one to three thousandths of a tolerance. So, what we're going to look for, see if we can't get a good, good grip on this one main here. There we go. That's too far away. There we go. We're going to go ahead and take these out, put one of these pieces of plastic gauge in there. And we're looking for, looking for that magic number here. So these have actually been drilled and tapped so we can actually have the windage tray on there because we don't have the appropriate, um, appropriate bolts for it. So while I was down at Tony's, we cut pieces of uh, stainless steel tube stock to uh, to make our own spacers for the windage tray. Which meant we had to also put, uh, they're quarter 20s, nothing big. I think they're like an inch, I don't remember, inch and a quarter. I don't really remember. But, so we do have a little bit of wear on there. Um, nothing, 
nothing too worrisome. Actually, it just looks like we actually ran the engine. There we are. Next, we need to get a piece of this. I'm gonna change my, take my gloves off. I just put clean gloves on so that I wouldn't get, you know, dirt from things in and out, and it makes it a little bit hard to get a piece. I have to just tear it open a tiny bit. Here we go. Piece of this green plastic gauge. Now we just want a small piece. We'll go ahead and break a small piece off. I don't know how well you can see that, if you can or can't. She's pretty tiny. We want to drop her down just about the top of the crank, just like that. Get her nice and straight. Then put the cap back on, making sure not to let it slide across the top. Now, when you're doing this, you definitely don't want to, you know, move your crank. You want it to stay exactly where it is. All right. Now, we torque her down to 85 pounds. And we're going to do the same thing to one of these caps as well. But... Okay, now that we have it in there, we got to pop this back off and check, see what the gauge says. I mean, depending on what the gauge says, depends on where we go from here. Okay. My heart's pounding, guys, because if if it's not the crank bearing and the, you know, if the bearings are wrong, or if it is the, I should say, <laughs> if the bearings are right, we're going to have to do a little bit of exploration inside this engine to find out where we're losing that oil pressure, because that, it's an awful lot of oil pressure. Pull this out nice and straight. So, let's see if you guys can see right there. You can see that mark. So let's see what we got. So one side is th uh, inches, one side is millimeters. We are looking for. Look at that, guys. She's smaller. I'm trying to get that a better shot. She barely squished it at all. We have the wrong size bearings, guys. There we are. That that very well could be where our uh, that is that is where our oil is. Let me give Nick a call and uh, tell him what I found. I'll be right back, guys.
we have a very teachable moment here and it really comes down to when I had this thing apart I uh I did something I didn't do something that I really should have I've I've always I've always relied on whatever the bearings in here telling me what they were I always relied on them being correct and I shouldn't I should never do that especially seeing how when I was disassembling this I it, it just seemed very off we have two fives you know we have we have all kinds of weird things going on that should have made me think hey I have a whole set of mics here why don't I mic it out and teachable moment to me I, I should not just assume the bearings inside of an engine are the correct bearings. And uh, when I was down at, at Nick or Tony's, you know, we were putting it back together. He pointed out that this engine had been put back together very weirdly at some point in its life. And uh, something I, I kind of, you know, I, I regret that wasn't done was uh, while it was down there, we skipped a very important part as well, which of course is plastic aging it. So, it is what it is. It's, it probably, it probably, uh, like Tony said, when I was up there, the amount of PSI that we had, which was at idle was like 23 to 18. He said we wouldn't even gotten close to the, the dashboard oil light coming on. So the, whoever drove this for, you know, say however many miles were on this end or on the block that I brought down there, you know, they would never have known. So I definitely don't put this on the previous owner of this engine. All he did was put the intake manifold on it. He didn't put the engine apart, uh, engine in there. So when he got it, it was still a two barrel. So at some point before the previous owner had the car, this engine was apart. And uh, I definitely don't put it on him because he would never he would never have known that there was an, a, a low oil pressure because it was it was just never that bad. But this could have been a lot worse. So. Let's go ahead and pull off a couple caps and uh, let's check it out. But fortunately, you know, this explains our oil pressure loss. And it's just as simple as figuring out what size we really need for this engine, which I just talked to Nick and he's thinking, realistically, this should have been 10 under. Um, so, yeah, this could have been a lot worse, guys. Teachable moment. Don't trust the bearings you pull out just because the thing was running. So the guy... So the next thing we're going to do is at least three of these main cap or uh, not main caps, um, rod caps. So there's my breaker bar. Let's try out these two right next to each other. They should be, even if this was turned over by somebody at some point in its life, they should be all the same. Should be. She didn't want to come off. Oh, that was one wasn't even tight at all. Out of curiosity. So these should be forty five pounds. Yep. That was maybe just one was loose. I don't know. I'll go through and I'll double check them all. Oh. Maybe that one was just, I don't know, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe we had one that was loose. I don't know. Anyways, back to the task at hand. these off to the side trying to get these off there we go all 
All right, so the next step is let's plastic gauge this. Once again, a little piece of green plastic gauge. Oh, it's not cooperating with me right now. Oh, that'll work. Put it in the center. <laughs> Put it in the center. There you go. She doesn't want to be stuck to my hand. Try to get it as straight as possible. And we slide this back on like so. Make sure. Yeah. One cool thing about these is if you look at these caps, huh, that's weird. So far, all of them had this, you know, this one doesn't. Hmm. Odd. Very odd. So we're going to go ahead and torque this down to 45 pounds. And hope, hope we don't have one that was taken apart by you know, and, and ground on by a machinist at one point and only did the mains. It, it should all be the same. They should all be identical. Now, if this is the case, we're going to have to find out what size we actually need. We have, the mains are supposed to be uh, two point, so two and a half inches and uh, the rods are going to be uh, 2.125. So we'll have to mic those out and then order a good set of appropriate fitting bearings. Which, with all the stuff that was going through the engine, that's probably why when we pulled, well, when Nick pulled one of the mains off to check, we didn't have a burnt up bearing from all the crap in there. Oh yeah, we have to take that back off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and pop this off. Now, unfortunately, there's really no way, because we can get an idea that these are wrong, right? And we can assume, but that's what happened. We assumed that the bearings in the first place were right. So let's go ahead. We're going to have to pull the crankshaft back out. And uh, we're going to have to check the, the actual... Now, we're going to have to mic the, the crankshaft, like I should have done in the first place. There we go. Oh, see, that is interesting, guys. Where did I put it? Let's get you guys up close and personal to this. Oh, I don't know how well you guys can. I'm gonna put you guys here. I'll grab my my camera or my phone. I'll turn the light on. And yeah, look at that, guys. It's I would easily say we're exactly at I had that on the metric side. Sorry, guys. We we are at the... Jeez, guys. Look at that. We're exactly at the, uh, the, the 200 thousandths. So, this crank has been changed out at some point. Or not changed out, but ground out at some point. And we have standard on top and 10 under on the... Or probably around 10 under on the mains. That's what I get. That's what I get for trusting the bearings that were in it. We had standards here and standards here. And these are standard and these are not. So I'm going to call Nick back up and uh, I'll let you guys know what what we uh, come up with here. So you have to remember this engine is old. Like <laughs> it's an old engine and it's it's got a lot of history. So this crank that came out of my engine... You know, like I said, the guy that I got the car from, he put the intake manifold on. He didn't do the whole, like, pull the engine apart or anything like that. But 
who's to say the guy before him didn't or the guy before him or so on and so forth. Now, this thing right here is, as we sit, or it has been as it sits, turned. So we have to, I'm going to put it back together now, but we are going to have to take this crankshaft out. We're going to have to get a mic on it and we're going to have to figure out how much um, undersized it is. So as it stands, it's supposed to be 2.5. So it's supposed to be two and a half inches. And uh, unfortunately, as it sits right now, we don't know, but it is definitely too small. Now, the goal will be mic it. If it's, say, 2.5. Four. Then we have it's it's ten under. So we got to figure out what we're working with, and that will be the next step. But this right here makes me very happy. That way we know we don't have like a cracked, uh, you know, we don't have a cracked block. It's it's not leaking oil somewhere inside the engine, and it, it this is this is don't get me wrong. It's it's bad, but boy, this is a huge weight taken off my shoulders. Now I know where we go from here and how we make this thing right so we can bring it back up to next we need to mic out the crank which unfortunately um i'll do that in a little bit i was gonna say i don't we'll mic it out and oh guys oh i gotta angle that differently there we go we have uh we have a direction we have an idea, not an idea, we have confirmed something that I was worried about, but it could have been a lot worse. It really could have been a lot worse. So learning from this, what can you take away? Just because you have a, uh, a bearing inside of an engine, you shouldn't rely on it. Um, that's what I've learned. So next, mic it, get the right bearings, put it back together. And uh, we have a little bit of cleaning. I, I've been talking to a few people how we can actually clean this block without fully disassembling it, which sounds insane, but I've talked to a couple guys. I, I've had a lot of you guys emailing me and I've been talking to a lot of you and how we can you know, make this right for you guys as well. Because this whole, whole build, especially this right here, is all about experimenting things, not only for myself, but for you guys as well. And... Uh, yeah, the, the biggest thing is some of you are worried that if I fully dismantle this engine and rebuild it, we lost the spirit of what was going on. Now, this is my, my suggestion. I'm going to leave it so you guys can have it in the comment section down below. And uh, I don't want to lose the, uh, the spirit of the engine. I don't want to, you know, take all the work that, you know, Tony, John, Al, lamb chop all these guys i don't want to go ahead and take all of the work that they did that day and it would be just an absolute shame and i also want to see with all of the tips and tricks that tony put into this this engine i want to see the results so i've heard several ways i've talked to some of uh, people that i actually used to race you know and how they've cleaned engines in the past without fully dismantling it which to me is like not really it's not really possible but uh you know at the end of the day i want everyone to be i want everyone to be happy with how we crossed the finish line and it seems like a lot of people have emailed me and said hey i'd rather see it go the way that you know everyone down there put it together then basically erase that day. So, and I, I you know, I, I tend to agree. I prefer when pulling apart stuff to, you know, it takes me a month to build an engine normally. You know, it, it takes me that long so that I can, you know, it takes two weeks to have it sit down in a machine shop, have it completely cleaned out. You know, if it's an aluminum head or aluminum block, it gets pressure tested. If it's a cast iron head or cast iron block, it gets magna fluxed. So we know what we have when we get it. And then I have a buddy that is super awesome that has access to a laser scanner. And, uh, you know, it's a hobby. It's not like I pay him to do it. It's because he's freaking awesome and he has an awesome hobby and he scans it and we get really cool dimensions out of it. And we, we can actually get way more accurate than normal gauges. So, and like I had someone ask me how much it costs to do it. I have no idea. Um, probably a lot, but he's awesome and uh, way smarter than I am. <laughs> he, uh, 
he went and he works for a really big company. He's a cool, cool dude. And, um, anyways, so I'm actually very excited because I was really, really worried. I'm like, I, I, I'll, I won't, I won't lie. I've been really worried about pulling this apart and finding those, those bearings being all right, because then we have, we have a bigger problem because sure we'll lose a little bit of oil pressure through the the push rods and the lifters not you know driving correctly but that was a lot of oil loss i was worried we had a crack somewhere but we don't guys on that not bombshell we have we have something to work on we have somewhere to go from and uh next i got to put that back uh, together i'm gonna leave the oil pump out for now and um Next, I'm going to get the thing cleaned up so that when, next time we run it, I want this thing to have an oil filter that is super clean. So that's the next time we run this engine will be with new bearings and uh, the lifters and everything right. We'll do the break-in again for, because we'll have new lifters. We'll do the break-in <laughs> and then cross your fingers, pray to God that we have a, a perfect block. So... I'm very excited and a big, big thank you because I've been bugging the heck out of John for this car, ideas about the engine, and uh, I've been bugging Nick. So thank you, John. Thank you, Nick, for, for just putting up with me, trying to figure, this is a different architecture of an engine that, you know, I, I was worried we had a crack somewhere because I, I, I've never had a, a bearing come out of an engine that was, was the wrong bearing. And just like Tony said when I was, because I was up there, I said, hey, um, you know, we're having some pretty bad oil pressure loss. And he said, well, what were you at? And I said, well, at idle, you know, after five minutes of running, we're at 23 PSI. And he said, that's fine. You're fine. That won't even set the, 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 he called it the idiot light. He won't even set off the idiot light on the dashboard. So if the oil, you know, oil pressure light didn't pop on, say, Hey, you have low oil pressure. There's no way that the previous owner would have known that there was was bad oil pressure so but i was i was worried we had a bigger problem and we don't we just have to learn from this experience and uh you know the whole premise of this was junk parts as an experiment and see what we get i've never done that so it's a i love i love experimenting with things and we learn something from it and uh I'm very grateful for, for Nick and John, you know, having put up with trying to figure out what this was and, you know, we've learned something. So after eight minutes of me talking and I don't know how long the video has been, I'm just, maybe you can tell I'm very, very excited. So I've never had oil pressure just drop out like that before, unless there was something serious wrong. Um, and generally if that's ever happened, it's because, you know, I, I work with, turboed engines it's there's all kinds of plumbing that goes to it and then there's always something that fails so generally if i've ever lost pressure that's where it's been in this this case we didn't have that so i'm just glad it wasn't something a lot worse so this 318 gets to live another day and we get to see it go inside the car that's awesome guys you have yourselves a wonderful day and until the next time remember keep her shiny side up and god bless